Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna talk about Shopify CLI for themes. Shopify CLI stands for Shopify Command Line Interface and is the latest alternative to Shopify Theme Kit. Previously, Shopify CLI was a tool that helped users create and deploy Shopify apps, but since the online store 2.0 announcements in June, 2021, Shopify have extended the Shopify CLI to provide new functions for theme development, including the ability to serve themes locally. So in this video, let's talk about how the Shopify CLI works and how to include it into your theme development workflow. Before we get started talking about how to use the Shopify CLI for theme development, I wanna provide some context here and talk about where this tool fits in compared to the other previous tools for developing Shopify themes. When I first started Shopify theme development back in 2019, there were two tools available. Slate and ThemeKit. I believe it was ThemeKit that came first, but at Shopify Unite 2017, Shopify announced something called Slate, a new build tool for Shopify themes intended to provide a more developer-friendly scaffold for building themes. Slate did have some good points, such as the ability to split up SCSS into multiple modular files and update CSS changes locally, but over time, Shopify decided not to maintain the project and eventually announced that they were officially ending support for Slate in January 2020. Therefore, Slate is not a tool I recommend to anyone anymore. In my opinion, the only reason to use Slate is if you have to, i.e. you have an existing Slate project that you're unable to or unwilling to migrate. That left us with ThemeKit, a simple tool for uploading and downloading theme files from your Shopify store, making it possible to work on themes locally. And now the latest option, which is to use the Shopify CLI for theme development. Chances are, if you're watching this video close to the release date, you might be using Shopify ThemeKit. As mentioned, Shopify ThemeKit is a simple tool for uploading and downloading theme code from themes already hosted on your Shopify store. We can do a one-time download from ThemeKit or a one-time upload from ThemeKit, or we can run the command theme watch and allow ThemeKit to detect and upload changes to the theme as it exists on the Shopify store as soon as they happen. For a full tutorial on Shopify ThemeKit, check out the lesson in my Skillshare class, Shopify Theme Development, how to build and customize your own online store. The Shopify CLI by comparison is a bit different. With Shopify CLI, you first connect the tool to your online store by running Shopify login. And from that point, you can begin to serve the theme code you have on your computer locally. Running Shopify Theme Serve, the CLI will take your theme code and generate a development theme. This development theme will come with a theme ID and a theme editor, but it won't exist in your Shopify store's theme library, and it will disappear after you run Shopify logout. Running these sort of phantom development themes locally makes theme development faster as we don't have to constantly re-upload the theme code to Shopify. The consequence of this, however, is that it's harder to ensure synchronization between themes on the store and themes on your local computer. And this is what makes the new GitHub integration so important. So in the following tutorial, we're gonna pick up where we left off in the last video and start to replace the use of ThemeKit with the new version of the Shopify CLI. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna demonstrate a workflow that combines Shopify CLI with the GitHub integration. Here in my first tab, you can see I've got my development store, Chris Testing Shop open as usual. And in my second tab here, I've got the documentation for Shopify CLI for themes. All I did to find this documentation was type those words literally into Google, and this came up as the first article, okay? So what we're gonna do, is if I head back to my store here, you can see I already have the Dawn theme installed on my store. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make a duplicate of this Dawn theme as our starting point. We're going to pull it onto our local computer. We're gonna create a Git repository and we're going to serve that theme using the CLI. And when we're ready to commit some changes, we're going to commit and push through GitHub and that will allow our changes to automatically be pushed to our Shopify store. All right, so for our first step, what I'm gonna do is download this theme code using the CLI. So let's head back into the documentation here. And before we can start to run theme specific commands, we need to actually log into our store. 
So I encourage you to read through the documentation here, but I'm just going to skip straight ahead to the command reference and go to the core command reference first. I'll click into that. And here you can see the different commands. The one we're looking for is login. And this is a very important to note here, you can't actually use Shopify CLI with development stores logging in through a partner account. So oftentimes as a Shopify partner with a partner account, I'll log into my store through my partner's account. That is not actually allowed through this system. I'm not sure if that'll change in the future, but for now, according to the documentation, it's not gonna work. So what we need to do is ensure that the account that we're logged in as is the store owner, if we're using a development store that is. So I can verify that by going into my settings, going down to users and permissions, and you can see the store owner is the account that I'm logged in as. Remember, this is only for development stores. If you're working on a live store that's on a paying plan, this should not be a problem. Okay, heading back to our themes page here and then clicking over to our documentation. I'm gonna open up my terminal application now, which is iTerm. The standard terminal application on Mac computers is just called Terminal, and I believe on Windows it's called Command Prompt, but I like to use this one called iTerm. From here, I'm going to run the command. Let's scroll down to here and look at the syntax. We need to run Shopify login dash dash store, and then put equals followed by the domain. Before I do that, I'm just gonna type Shopify version to make sure that we have Shopify CLI installed. In this video, we're not gonna go over installation because it's gonna be different for every computer and the instructions are all here on the documentation. But here you can see running Shopify version, it comes up with a version number confirming that I do have Shopify CLI installed. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is run Shopify. Actually, I'm going to increase the size of this so you guys can see easier gonna run Shopify login dash dash store equals, let's grab the my Shopify address of our store. And then we will run that. As you can see, it'll open up a new tab and it'll ask us to log into the store again. So we need to make sure we select the right account here. I'm gonna select this one, which is the store owner account. And as you can see, it says authenticated successfully we may now close this tab, okay? So closing that, going back over to our terminal, you'll see we are now logged in. All right, so that's all we need from the core commands. When we're ready to log out of our Shopify store, we just run Shopify logout, so that's pretty simple. But what I wanna go into now is the theme-specific commands. So I'm gonna click into here, and we're gonna to start to use some of these theme commands. Before we do that, I'm gonna navigate into the code directory where I want this to happen. So I have a folder set up for all my Skillshare videos. If I hit enter on that, now I'm inside that directory. And then if I go back to the documentation here, there are a range of different options. I implore you to look through them all. But what we're gonna do, like I said at the start, we're gonna download this theme. So we're gonna use this command pull and it retrieves themes from Shopify, all right? So I think for this one, what we're gonna to have to do is make a directory because I don't believe it makes one for you. So I'm going to use the command mkdir on a Mac to create a theme and I'm just gonna call it Dawn. Let's just call it Dawn2. Then I'm going to navigate into that directory. And then here I'm going to type Shopify theme pull. We can put the parameters in directly with the theme ID or we can just leave it blank and it'll ask us to fill in those options. So I'm going to just run that with no options and it'll show us the list of themes that we can pull from. I'm gonna pull from the live theme, Dawn Mame. And here you can see we're starting to download those files. This may take a while, so I will fast forward and I'll catch you at the end of this process. So there we go, it has pulled successfully. Full disclosure, I had to stop the process and rerun the command as it did get stuck on 99%. But as you can see, on the second time, it only took 17 seconds. I'm gonna run clear now and from here, I'm going to open up Finder and verify I've got those folders and files inside my Dawn2 directory here. Here you can see we have all our theme files here. So what I'm gonna do from this point is I'm going to get out of iTerm and I'm going to run a new terminal inside my code editor.
So I'm going to open up my code editor, which is Visual Studio Code. And then I'm going to open up that folder. So now we are inside our Dawn 2 directory. I'm going to open up a terminal. Clear all that. And from here, I'm going to run Shopify theme serve. So if we go into the documentation here, click on serve, the command will upload the current theme code as a development theme to the store that we're connected to and returns the development theme local address, the link to the online store editor and a preview link that we can use to share with other developers or people of any sort on the internet. Okay, so let's go back to our code editor here and run that command Shopify theme serve. Now it's going to create that development theme for us. Again, this might take some time. So I'll fast forward and see you at the end. All right. So as you can see, after about 76 seconds, we've got our three links here that we mentioned earlier. We've got our local development link. We've got our link to the store editor. It's kind of like a temporary store editor. I'll get to that in just a second. And we have this link to share with people through the internet. Now, as you can see, this theme has a theme ID as evident from this link and this link. So it is being served from our Shopify store. So if I click on this and open this up in a new tab, you can see we are running this theme through our Shopify store. It gives it a weird name development followed by a little bit of a code here, but we are running it through our Shopify store. But if we look inside our theme library here, I'm just going to refresh to make sure close this down and I scroll down to my theme library, you'll see that theme does not exist in our theme library. So this is why I call it like a phantom theme. It exists, but it doesn't exactly exist or it doesn't exist the same way it has done in the past with preview themes inside the theme library. And this is why it's really important to have a GitHub integration set up because GitHub will sync and ensure that the theme code is inside our theme library if we have the GitHub integration set up. Otherwise, when we run Shopify logout, we'll still have the code here on our computer, but we won't have access to this editor anymore and the data we make through this editor is lost. Again, I'm going to demonstrate that in just a second. But for now, I'm going to start that GitHub repository. I'm going to create a new tab here, clear this, run git init, git add dot to add everything, and then git commit dash m initial commit. If you guys have used git before, this should all be very standard. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is create a GitHub repository on my GitHub account. So I'm going to click here to create a new repository and I'm going to call this Dawn. I'll just call this Shopify CLI tutorial. All right. I'll make this private, create repository. And then I'll just add this as a remote. So copying that command, pasting it in here. And then from here we can run git push origin master to push our code to GitHub. Okay. So that should complete pretty quickly. And then if we refresh over here on GitHub, you can see all of our files are now on GitHub. So now that we've got our code here synced with GitHub, we just need to sync it with our theme library. So I'm going to add a theme here, connect from GitHub. Again, if this looks weird to you, make sure you go back and watch the last video where we go more in depth about the GitHub integration. I'm going to breeze through a bit here because we've already covered it and I'm going to go to my account and select that repository. So it was Shopify, Shopify CLI tutorial. It's not showing up probably because of my permissions. So I'm just going to configure my permissions again, go down and whitelist this newly created repository. Click there, hit save, and that will allow this integration from Shopify to access that repository. So going back here, I'm going to refresh, head back down, 
to the theme library, connect from GitHub, choose my personal account, And then here you'll see that Shopify CLI tutorial is now available as an option. So I'll click on that one. There's only one branch at the moment, which is master. So I'm going to click to connect with that one. And now it'll spin up a branch based off of that. Okay. So I'm going to just rename this while it's spinning up. I'm going to call it Dawn 2. And now if we click preview, we can see we've got our copy of the Dawn theme here. All right, so closing that down, we've now got our GitHub integrated. We've got our Shopify theme server running locally. Let's open up our local address here. And as you can see, we get the same look, but we're serving this locally rather than on the Shopify store. Okay, so this is a development theme right here. The code that we just pushed here is an actual theme in our theme library. So that's the difference there. So if I go back here, one of the cool features about a development theme is if I just break this off and let's put it, try and put this side by side, make a change here to the, let's do the same one that we did in the previous video. So I'm going to inspect up here, losing a bit of screen real estate here, but if I inspect up here, we'll see announcement bar message. So I'll just search for that, find it here. And then we will replace block settings text escape with announcement bar. I'll hit save on that and let's look at what happens. As you can see, this updates instantly. It's not uploaded to any Shopify store. This is all served locally. And because of that, the update happens much faster and I don't even have to reload the page over here. This is live updating. So if I go over to here and again, following the same example that I did in the last tutorial, make the color of this bar, but let's just call it blue. Now you can see within a few seconds that automatically changes to blue. Okay. So that's the benefit of serving it locally. We don't have to constantly upload to the Shopify store to view the changes. Okay. I'm going to move these back to where they were before. So put that back to what the color was before. Drag these out to full screen. All right. So let's go back to the documentation here. I'm going to put this tab back into my list of tabs here and going into our theme commands. We can realistically from this point, just work on the theme. And when we're ready to push, we can commit the changes and push them to the repository, which will automatically sync with this theme. So here you can see that's where the synchronization with GitHub comes in handy. Realistically, if we're using GitHub, we won't lose any changes because theoretically we will have synchronization between our local environment, GitHub and our online store. If we head back into the documentation, we can see a whole bunch of other commands. We can check the theme. We use pull already. We can push the theme code up to a specific theme. So we don't have to use the GitHub integration. We can just push it using this, which doesn't use GitHub at all. I don't recommend that. I recommend you use the GitHub integration and we can use the command line to publish a theme as well, but that isn't too essential when we can always just click here to publish. Okay. But if we wanted to put that into some sort of app where that's automated, that would make sense. Now, a big thing to make note of here, and I'm not sure exactly if Shopify have an answer for this or not, but I have noticed that if we, for instance, go in here and make changes to the theme editor for this particular theme. If I go in here and let's just say I remove sections or change sections on the home page, that data usually gets stored in your settings underscore data.json file or alternatively in the online store 2.0 environment with the JSON templates get stored directly on the JSON template. So let's have a look here in index.json. Here you can see we've got all of our homepage settings here. So we've got image banner, featured products and image text. If I look in our theme editor, that's exactly what we have. The names might be slightly different to what's on here, but those are the three sections. So if I, for instance, take this and remove that section completely, hit save on that. 
and I refresh here, you'll see that nothing changes in the actual JSON file where that change would typically be recorded. If I go into here, for instance, to show you a comparison, and let's see the same thing on our theme, on our actual store. Let me open up the code alongside that. Go into index.json. Here you can see we've got image banner, featured products, image text, just like we have here. But the difference is if I go here and remove that section and hit save, if I then go and refresh over here, you'll see that the section has now been removed because the data from this selection is stored in the JSON object. The same can't be said for over here. Now, I'm not sure if there's some external address or some kind of other hack that Shopify have where this data actually gets stored or the data from your theme customizer here. But the problem with Shopify theme serve that I've found and it's important to note is that your data here does not match up with your data here. And so that's very important to note as any changes you make in here will likely get lost when you start to push because your selections don't seem to be stored anywhere. Again, guys, if you have any insights in this, feel free to let me know. But I've looked at the documentation, I've tested it, and that data seems to just get lost when you make those changes and push the theme code to the store. So be very careful of that, guys. If you do want to apply permanent changes from this online store editor, make sure you do it on a theme that's in your theme library, i.e. a theme that's stored on your Shopify store. Even though these development themes you know, they have an address, they have an ID, they are served through a Shopify address. The data does not seem to get stored anywhere and it's definitely not reflected in your theme library. So a big, big warning there. Let's just say we've made our customizations now on our local development theme and we want to actually push that code to this theme so that we can actually make some customizations in the store editor that will get recorded. Now, first of all, I've made an edit here to this theme. So that should be synced in GitHub. So if I go here and I run, let's open up a new command here and run git pull origin master, you'll see that that change from live or not from live, but from the theme in the theme library has come through. So we talked about this in the last video, any change you make inside the online store editor or for that matter, inside the customizer, which eventually gets stored in JSON, will come through in GitHub. And so what I did there was just made sure that our current theme code is in synchronization with what's on the store. The difference now between this theme and the theme that we're running locally is this one change here. So if I go into my source control panel, as you can see here, we've removed that dynamic value and changed it to just the hard-coded text announcement bar. So what I'm gonna do here, is commit that change, remove dynamic value from announcement bar and hit this to commit that change. I have to actually stage that commit first and now I'm going to run that. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to run git push origin master to push that code up. I've misspelled origin there. Now that's uploaded to GitHub and in a few moments should sync across to this theme. So let's see if it's synced yet. I'll go into theme preview for this theme. And now you can see that text has now changed to announcement bar. And of course our change to the sections has been recorded as well. So now we've got the code changes from local with the online store editor changes here that manifest of course in JSON. That's now all in synchronization. All right, so a few concepts there to get your head around. I'm gonna leave it there guys. If you wanna know more about the CLI, a good point of reference is, of course, the documentation as always. Just remember, and Shopify does not tell you this, that any changes you make in this editor right here do not seem to get saved. And so you'll need to reproduce those changes on a theme that's stored in your theme library. Okay, so just note that gotcha there. Otherwise, this tool is pretty cool. It allows us to work on theme code locally without having to create a preview theme or a development theme on our theme library and with the GitHub integration, it ensures that we never lose any code apart from, of course, the theme customizer changes.
So that's all for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. If you learned something today, please do drop a like or a comment on this video and I'll see you on the next one.